Um, well, the table tennis is going to be absolutely key for Luke here. It, like he needs a he needs a good table tennis um, to have to to have a chance because I think Ratsa will take away his badminton in in the next discipline. So. Ratsa is improving his table tennis over the weekend. Like he, he started he started very badly in the, in the first match, but the yeah, that was a he's come a after. I just warm up with him right now. Actually, in the, he's hitting the ball much better. That's good. That was a real surprise that uh, that first match. Yeah, yeah. Sylvain Def Ternon. definitely. But so Sylvain has a very good profile for to to Ratsa because he's the one of the few players in the world that can take away Ratsa's badminton. Mm. Ratsa's been all over him so far. Mm. It's a good early start. I think Luke, Luke is struggling a bit with his uh, with Ratsa's serve, and that means Ratsa can get on the attack afterwards. Again, there. You've played Ratsa a lot. How do you how do you deal with his serve? Because it's quite awkward. Well, Luke, Luke needs to be to be watching uh, for the half long serves and uh, and and attack his uh, attack those serves. If he doesn't if he doesn't do that, then Ratsa will 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 be on the attack every time. I think it's. 6-1 oh yeah. 6-1, very fast start for yeah. for Jesper. Actually, you just work with Rata on that variation of serve from, from Luke because we knew it was going to come. Uh, but uh, Rata wasn't, wasn't equal to that. Uh, it's a better return. That was a good return, straight back at Rata's body. Yeah, and it was a bit flat and, and came back with some, some, some a bit of nasty spin as well, looked like. Looked like. See, that's exactly what he needs to do. Exactly that. Yeah. Look, looking at that half-long serve and attacking that. That's that's what he needs to do. I think as well with a player like Ratsa, there's there's a certain aura about him, where you go on court and, I mean, quite understandably, you know you have to play your absolute yeah. best yeah. in order to beat him or even come close. Yeah, no, no, for sure. And Sylvan managed that yesterday, but came up a little bit short. Yeah. And you wonder, you know, Luke's only 18. This is the biggest match of his life so far. Definitely. He's got to play as, as free as he possibly can and go into it with a, well, I've got nothing to lose. No, no, exactly. Let's and see he, what he, I can he do. really does have nothing to lose. I, I don't really think anyone believes that that he can win that this match. Maybe except for himself. I mean, uh, it's funny with, funny with with Luke. It's, his confidence is sky high. It's just mm. like um, we're joking a, a, around a bit earlier uh, this weekend with. With uh, Leon, Leon might go to the final or at least the semi-final, and, and maybe if he's ready to win it. And it's like Luke sitting next to me, and it's just like, well, he's not going to win it because I'm in it. <laughs> so, so obviously, his confidence is is, is high. But uh, it's a tough start now with the uh, five eleven here. It is. It's a great start for Jesper, and of course he's got the experience at this level as well. He's played. Yeah, he's he's been seven, eight semi-finals. Yeah, around something, something like around that, then. Something like that, and obviously one. How many six six titles? Uh, five worlds and one European. Okay. So yeah, six majors. So this is the one for him. Yeah, and he said to me last year after he won, he said five's nice. He said but six is six yeah. is what I want. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was pretty sure he was going to come back this year um, because he wants that. He needs one title actually to 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 go ahead of Eliasson, right? Uh, it's uh, Mika Kakainen. Oh, Mika Kakainen on, on six at the moment. Yeah, no, but but also one one title. Uh, ah, yes. Just on the world tour to yes. to, to pass uh, Elias on. Uh, yeah, I think they're both on. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Uh, so he, so I, I was sure he was going to come back and try to break those records. Yeah, he is a man who holds most records in racket on. Of course, currently on the longest unbeaten streak we've ever seen. So yeah, something like around 100 tw between 120 and 125 matches without a loss. Yeah, we curious to see if Seehofer is gonna is gonna surpass that at some point. Yeah, she's she's, she's over 100 now as well. She's obviously more active more active than than Jesper is on the yeah. tour. Of course, Chrissy not here this weekend. No, the thir the third shame. player on that list of uh, of unbeaten runs at the moment is actually Steena Jakobsen. Okay. It's currently on 17 matches won. Yeah, but her last uh, her last win was uh, her last loss was to Seehofer, right? At, yes. uh, at the French Open. Uh, I think it was the first she lost in the French Open. That was the closest Chrissy's come to losing. Yeah, in a yeah long exactly. Time. No, then she lost one, and then one she time lost after in the World Champs first round two years ago. Okay. 
but then, or maybe the second round. But uh, yeah. either way, she has not lost since then. Two titles this year, and playing in the final today against Astrid Roma Kern. Yeah, that'd be, be an interesting final as well. well. Astrid needs to uh, to step up a little bit from three weeks ago, where she lost to her. In Switzerland as well. Yeah. Good serve for there, but he missed missed the easy easy winner. So Stunned. Luke is really struggling with his serves. Still a nice lead though for Jasper, six points as it stands. And like you said at the start, Creston, this is one that Luke, if he has a chance of this match, he has to win the table tennis. Uh, I I definitely think he needs to win the table tennis. I'm curious to see how how good Luke's Luke's badminton is compared to a, a really good player like like Jasper. Yeah, we've seen him. Uh, of course, he played Adash Nariyama Swami uh -huh. in the last round. Very good badminton player as well. Won that to is it 18 or 19. Okay. But yeah, Jesper is, a, think is Jesper a step is a up in class. Yeah, exactly. I think Jesper is a little bit of a, a different level to, uh, to Adash even as well. That's a good couple of points from Luke. And you can already hear the crowd that are watching here this morning. Even though it's early. Even though it is early. Nine o'clock start. Quite a lot of players enjoying the Saturday night here in Switzerland as well. Having a few drinks was, at the yeah. hotel bar. But no, good good crowd early. And we expect as this match kind of progresses and moves to squash, so it'll just pick people up. And yeah. There are more people coming in from the hotel uh, with the shuttle buses uh, as the match progresses. I think it's, uh, it's one thing... One thing uh, a lot of people have said this weekend is how good the atmosphere has been. Something we've all missed is... Uh, I think it's been really good on the squash court, especially, mm. uh, so far. And actually the tennis as well, but that a lot of that has come from the drama we've actually seen on court. Three gummy arms in the men's and women's elite. Yeah, yeah. All right. And yeah, some brilliant squash sets as well. Really has been good to see... You know, all the best players in the world back in one place. First time in two years. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's been great. First tournament for me in two years as well. Yeah, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I have. I have, I have to say, like, uh, I played the Danish Championships uh, back in, in July, but I was I was so out of shape that I didn't enjoy it at all. And obviously now I, I'm in better shape and it's been more fun to, to be in court. 12-19, Luke needs a, a comeback here. He does, he needs a late rally. It's, it's a good, good serve, good. good serve, good follow-up. But now it's a two, point, two points on Rata's serve. He, he might be able to finish it out here. That's yeah. well played. Yeah, the, when he's attacking Ratas' uh, long serves, it's 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 very good for him. He, he can't be passive on those. That's the type of player Luke is in all disciplines. He's very positive. Yeah. Then Ratas kept the next one next one short, and, and and Luke was ready to attack, but but didn't 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 manage to. Yeah, and Jesper takes the table tennis. 21-14, seven point lead heading into the badminton. I mean, obviously, Sylvain got better. He got a bit used to to how Jesper plays because because they'd never played before, and and uh, but but it seemed like Jesper ran out of steam a little bit. Good disguise there in the in the first one from from Jesper. So Luke needs to keep his keep his uh, feet a little bit. See again, he was in st struggling for on the return there, or maybe just needs to serve serve long to Jesper because uh, Jesper doesn't have much power on the badminton court. He's more of a of a grinder, uh, very, very fast around the court. I mean, I, I'm saying he, he doesn't have power. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously comparing to, to you know, to Danish badminton players um, of the highest level. And of course, one thing you're talking about uh, about fatigue. One thing that does factor in is that Luke has played four or five more matches, played in the under 18s as well, which he won. I don't think they were too hard on him. Those 18 on 18 matches, though, like I, I haven't seen the results, but I am assuming he was much better uh, than he, his he, opponent. He, uh, he had a, a couple of tough sets against Florian Harker and Matthew Davidson, right. but 
Florin Hager still under 18 as well. Interesting. Yes, yeah, last year for both, for yeah. actually for all three of them. Um, Should be a good uh, under 21 draw next, next year. Then, very yeah, good. In Austria. Well, Florian and Matthew did also play the under 21, but Yannick Andre won that one in the end, beating Florian in the final. But yeah, Luke just entering the under 18s. We've, <laughs> we've seen it before with Luke. A few well, years it's ago. It's impressive to be 18 and, and be in a world championship semi final for the. For the Open, that's uh, that's very impressive. Absolutely, he's got a, a bright future in, in front of him. Really bright future. Both the Griffiths boys do. Definitely. Could be a that's could be a, a real dominant play. force as uh, as the tour transitions away from the sort of Ratzer era into a new era. Yeah. I think the, the Griffiths brothers will be front and centre of that. Yeah, I think so too. I, I've heard some people say that, that Luke is the more talented of the two. Um, obviously, Leon has a higher level as it stands right now, but is how much? Five years older? Four, 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 four and a half, I think. Yeah. Luke came back into it uh, quite well. I thought Russell was going to run away with it there at 4 1. Yeah, he looked like he was, he was struggling, a bit like you said with Sylvans, just struggling to kind of read Jesper's game to start with but yeah. already kind of got a, got a handle on that will be very interesting if, if Luke can get a win in badminton yeah. he, he comes out of the service situation quite bad when, when, when he's serving himself uh, I've seen it uh, four times now I think I think uh, if it was me I would serve long to, to Jesper and do the high serve instead and what what are for for players that don't know badminton quite as well? What are the advantages and disadvantages of a short serve compared to a long serve? The short serve uh, prevents the the other player from from attacking, um, and th that's kind of the idea of of, of doing this, the short serve. Um, obviously, it, it's something that evolved in badminton because because when I started watching badminton and you know the legendary Peter Gale uh, from Denmark, uh, he was he was always doing the long serves, uh, the, the the high high single serves they call it um, and that kind of while well he kind of started getting worse and not worse but but the other players caught up to him it, it's kind of changed uh, see that there was a long surf by Luke and he got it better into the rally and had a big chance actually to win it yeah that's a mistake there from Luke and something you can't afford to do against yeah. Jesper Ratzer yeah, so, so like any other record sport it, it, it develops and then you, you kind of trying to find the advantages where you can and, and that turned into the to the short serve to try and avoid your opponent from getting the attack on you. Yeah, it's something Magnus uh, Eliasson was saying yesterday actually about how because it's the first time he's properly been involved again for, for 10 years or so. He was saying it's amazing how the game has developed and how you now have this generation of players coming through who have played racket on as kids because the kind of he said the original group he said we just started yeah. playing racket on yeah. but we weren't racket on players. So these group, Luke and Leon and yeah, that's like Florian the Harker, generation. Luca Penton and the first generation of true racket long players from when they were kids. So Luke went for the for the long serving in there, but it was way too short in the middle of the court, and uh, and Ratza punished it. A little bit unsure on that call. Has been called out. Yeah, it was called out. 11, 11 seven. Yes, but just pulled away there at the end. It was very tight throughout that first set and then yes we're just winning three points in a row uh, I mean from from Luke's side of, side of things I mean I would I would as I said I would, I would go for the with a high serve but but I wouldn't do it as a flick serve I would I would just go over and, and serve the the high high single serve um, and make sure I have good depth on that and then Ratz will get tired if he if he tries to attack that all the time uh, because then there's a long a long run to the front court after or afterwards and that gives plenty of time for Luke to, to set himself and prepare for yeah. Ratz's response. You're saying a minute ago he's sometimes a little slow coming out of the serve, yeah. getting punished for that. Yeah, Ratz is just good, like coming up early on the on the short serve and, and, and flicking it over his head or, or holding him uh, to the front court. So let's see let's see what he comes up with uh, now in the second. Uh, Ratz is serving first. Oh, good hold by Luke. That's well played by Luke. Good hold on the on the serve, and a good uh, a good drop to follow up.
again. It seems like both players are coming out of the surf quite quite poorly, actually. Uh, I'd like to see an, a statistic on, on how many points is won in their own surf, actually. Mm, we'll be, we'll, we'll have to go, go back and watch the footage yeah, to, exactly. uh, to put that together. Oh, Rata got out of trouble there. Just wide in the far corner. It's interesting, we always think of Leon as a, as a really good badminton player. Luke and Leon actually recently played in their sort of county championships back in England. Another point directly off the serve there for yeah. Ferrata. And they actually met in the semi-finals. Okay. Leon won, but he won, I think it was 21-17, 21-18. Okay. So Luke's getting closer. I'd say I, I wasn't impressed with uh, with Luke in the um, in the last round he played um, in the badminton. Against um, Adash. Against, no, it was actually the one against Mohammed. Mohammed. The, the, the one before. But, but, he, but Mohammed is, in a, is, in, is awkward to play against. So so uh, it's it's a little bit slightly different badminton. That's what I was talking about. Luke. You saw, saw Rats in the, in the previous point there go for the high high single serve as well. He he realized okay I'm 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 in trouble on my when I'm serving short here. So so he he's ch trying to change it up now. And that's something Jesper's played for long enough that you know he has a plan A, plan B, plan yeah. C. He can adapt his game. Yeah. Probably better than anyone else. Probably yeah. Probably better than anyone else on the tour. Maybe except for Tenong, which he played in the first round, but. The serve area. That's the other side of the coin. Is just like he, he, now he he knows he has to serve well and not not to get in trouble um, directly off it. So see Ratsa with the high single serve again. Uh, well played by Luke. Again, I I feel like feel like points are won in in against the serve every time. Uh, in this in this set, and how how common is that in in badminton at this level? I don't know. I think to be, it depends how how good. I mean, obviously, I don't think badminton is not an advantage to uh, to serve necessarily, like uh, as it is in tennis, for example, or table tennis especially. Obviously, he's still he's still insisting on the on the backhand serve. Rata gets into the attack. And that's a fantastic shot from Jesper. Luke might have just cut his elbow there. Is possible on these courts, as uh, I found out on Friday. Yeah, <laughs> I have a little cut on my uh, on my hip as well from a little dive on the squash court. It's not like you to dive, Creston. No, I had one in badminton as, as well <laughs> yesterday. You know, it's not a World Championships without uh, without a good dive. That's Luke. Luke showed us there. And that one's just caught the edge of the line. And Luke's, he, ju he Luke's just hanging in here in the second in there, half. I mean, if he can, uh, if he can manage to sneak this uh, badminton set, that would be. I think he's actually. Is he bleeding or uh, yes, he's bleeding on his elbow. Yeah. How have you found these badminton courts here? Obviously, the first time we've we've had a racket on tournament at this venue, Sil Sports. <coughs> I know a lot of people say in the badminton court is playing very, very fast. I really, no, I, th I think it's, I don't think it's the badminton courts that are playing fast. I think it's the shuttles that are slightly, slightly faster uh, than they, than they probably should be. So you need to, to control the, the speed of the shuttle by, by bending some, some feathers here and there. Um, but I actually really like the, the badminton courts. Like mm. you can see this. This venue is, is made for playing badminton in. Um, you know, black walls on the back, um, same same amount of, of distance uh, from the back of the court to, to the to the walls on both sides and, and stuff. It's it's really nice badminton hall. Um, something that we're obviously used to in Denmark, uh, having good venues everywhere like this. Yeah, I can Ooh, that's a good smash on the line. Tell you they are not as common in the UK. No, I know that. <laughs> and it's the, normally when. Even you know I live in Malta and, and, and we have like a couple of places where we play badminton and it's just huge badminton halls, uh, but not made for badminton, made for multi-sports purposes, obviously. Um, and you have white walls on the back. You have you know uh, 20 meters from the back of the court to the end of the wall, so it's really tough to see the to see the shuttles actually. But, yeah. but this this uh, this badminton these badminton courts are very nice. Speaking of shuttles and 
just changing to a new one there and uh, it's six set points for Jesper and really at this stage you have to think Luke's in quite a bit of trouble heading towards definitely, the squash definitely. you see the shot the shot is definitely too fast as well so they're gonna just slightly bend uh, every fourth feather or even maybe even every second here um, to, to slow it down a little bit and have the right speed on the shuttle. Yeah, that was something I, I only learnt about this weekend for the first time. Okay. Not a badminton player, but yeah, people talking a lot about tipping the shuttle. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant and yeah, I've learnt that this weekend. Learn about what it means and, and, and yeah, what it does to the game as well. something new all the time. Right? Yes. Uh, loops in trouble here. He yeah. is. Not happy with himself. No, you can see he's frustrated. He, he hung in there until 14-16 and then uh, Ratsa sneaked the last five points. Very busy and you have to say a, a huge well done to Esther and the entire team behind getting this World Championship Definitely. together. Definitely, she, de she deserves a lot of credit for this. Um, it's very tough to put on uh, such a big tournament in, in, in so short notice uh, yeah. and, and, and basically if it wasn't for for her and her team, we we wouldn't have a World Championships this year uh, again. Um, so so big credit to uh, yeah, huge to credit. for that. I think all the players that are here will agree it's been a it's been a really fantastic tournament. Definitely, and it's a nice venue as well. It's the first time uh, I've been in this venue. I know they played some local racket on here before, um, but I think it's the first international one they we ha we're having at this venue. It is. I think there was supposed to be a challenger last year that uh, obviously yeah. fell by the wayside. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, a tournament will return. Uh, a venue, sorry, will return to in the future. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a nice venue. Definitely. I mean, I mean, we all know the Vitis venue in. Not too far from here, in uh, in Schlier and uh, close to Zurich as well. Um, that's a very nice venue with you know glass cold squash and, yes. and everything. But they are going to be tearing that down reasonably soon, um, unfortunately. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, it was it was actually supposed to happen this year, but uh, it's been postponed a bit because of you know COVID and stuff, uh, I believe. Um, but th that. That place, the the location itself, is is worth so much money. So uh, some people feel it's a shame to have a sports venue there and want to do like you know business or apartments. I'm not sure, but uh, but they are get definitely going to be tearing that that venue down. Well, that is a shame because of course that hosted the 2018 World Championships. It's a legendary venue that has a lot of a lot of World Championships on its mm. resume. Actually, a uh, good racket on memories then. Back in 13, we were there too. Yeah, Switzerland knows how to host a good World Championships. Definitely do. Not too much, uh, you know, on, on the social side of things this time, you know, with normally we, we always have a players' party and stuff, but we're not really allowed to do that uh, in these challenging times, uh, unfortunately. So, no one. So, so, unfortunately, that part is missing, but that's not really anything that the organizers could do anything about. No, and I think, I think the players understand that a few players having some drinks in the tournament Good hotel shot. last night and, and doing what they can. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully we'll get to see a return to that side of Racketlon yeah. next year. Definitely. I hope so. Well, yeah, I'm hosting my tournament as well in, in a few months you in, are. in Lanzarote. And there's always, we're always going to have a good players party there. So, um, An entry still open for that one? Definitely. Uh, for, yeah, another, another month and a half, you can still sign up for that tournament. Brilliant. Well, I will be out there. Nothing beats a bit of uh, December sun in Lanzarote. Yeah, I know. It's beautiful. It's going to be uh, an, an awesome tournament. Yeah, always is. Yeah. Were you there last year? I was there uh, yeah, 2019. Ago. I was. Yeah, yeah. That was my first time out there. And yeah. I have to say, one I will be penciling in every single year. Uh, it's a beautiful, incredible, beautiful incredible venue. facilities. Yeah. Arguably the best. Yeah. Well, I think if you're a, if you're a sports fan in general, the best there is on the yeah. Circuit. Then if you are if if you love sports and being active, then that that place there is a holiday uh, holiday place for you for sure. Yeah, it's certainly a tournament to to come out, play the three days, and and stay an extra few as well. It's an interesting. There's a, a few of the of the Reckland players who are actually working there uh, full time. Uh, yeah, well, I, I came out with uh, John Spinks two yeah. years ago and he loved it so much. He's working there now. Exactly. Margot Ranchbar, of course, women's yeah. elite player. She's working there as well. I used to work there a good 15 years ago now. I feel, I feel, I feel quite old when I say that, but uh, <laughs> it was a good, good time. Good time of, uh, of my life. 
So that's expected Ratos uh, pouring it on in the squash here. Uh, yeah, Luke, Luke frustrated with himself, but... Needs to kind of come to terms with the fact that Ratzer is a, is just a, a, a stronger squash player, at yeah. least at the moment. Yes, yes. Oh, wow, that was a strange serve. Mm, really strange Not sure if he, if he did that on purpose. Hard to tell with a smile on his face whether he did and it went wrong or whether it was an accident. But I've never seen him serve like that before. No. Like, I've seen him play a lot of squash, but I've never seen that serve. Oh, it's a good trigger boost. This is some of the deception that Rata have from badminton is, is, is being able to do these things uh, with his wrist on a, on a little hold. Uh, something that most of the badminton players have taken with them onto the squash court. And you have to say, just watching this match, Rata looks like he's warming up into this tournament now. Yeah. yeah he's, he had a first tough, uh, tough uh, second round uh, there with, with Sylvain, but I think that's that helps him get into get into gear, especially on his badminton actually, because because it was a very good badminton opponent. I think it was a shame uh, we didn't get to see him face Kuhn Hagaratz in the first round as well. Yeah. Kuhn just won the um, IWT Dunlop Rotterdam Open. Unbelievable table tennis player. Yes. That match probably would have gone to tennis as well. Yeah, it probably would if, if I mean, Kuhn would, would win the table tennis to single digits there, so so Rata would, would have to really play well to not get onto to, to the tennis court. No, that's a good point there from Luke. He's uh, bashing his rackets a bit. Uh, he is. He's not. He's played a lot of matches this weekend. He's not lost yet, or really come particularly oh. close. That's a nice post. It's lazy from Ratza that that return. So lazy, and then obviously Luke Luke punishes that, which is good. At this stage, is there a is can can Ratsa begin to relax a little bit, play a bit more yeah, freely? Yeah, he can. He can. He he's got this one back. Um, I don't think anyone would argue differently with that. Um, and, and right now, he's he's having himself a little walk in the park. Maybe he he could start working on a few things uh, that he wants to to do on in the final. Yeah, absolutely. Or something that he wants to improve to the final. But I think it just it just helps him being on court, being actually being competitive because he obviously didn't play in Iraqland for a good what two and a half years, two years. Yeah. Um, yeah, his last tournament was, was Leipzig was what November two years ago, so yeah, two years. Two years ago. So I I think the the more time on court he gets, the better the better he'll be. Like we obviously know how good he can be. Um, so. Rats are now 21 points ahead, and it's looking well. Like this match is, is probably over. So just turning our attention to the next semi-final. Mm -hmm. How do you see that one going? Obviously, Morton Yaxland against Leon Griffiths, the older Griffiths brother. I'm very excited, uh, to be honest, about this match. Uh, I mean, Rats is three to one ahead uh, in their internal standings, I think. Um, but but obviously, Leon won the last time they played, and and they didn't even. Didn't even get the tennis rackets out of their bags there, so um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how both players come out to that match. Uh, I don't know. Have you been able to? I know you've obviously been playing at similar times to both of them. Have you been able to see either of them play much this weekend? I mean, I watched uh, all of uh, Morton's matches. I've uh, been been coaching him and and, and so on. So uh, Lee and I watched a little bit. Um, he, he, he looked sharp in, in his first in first round matches. Uh, not sure if he played any tennis yet. He hasn't played any tennis yet. Hasn't Sorry. actually dropped a set yet. It's gone quite... Yeah. He, he's walked through the draw so far, it has to be said. And given he's played you know, Magnus Eliasson, Kasper Jonsson... Yeah, especially the, the win against Kasper is, is quite impressive. Yeah, um, yeah to, win that, to win that one. Kasper obviously a legend of the sport as well. And Actually, he played two two legends of the sport in the first two round matches. Yeah, he did indeed. Had um, uh, one of the best squash sets, I think, of the weekend so far in his first round match. Yeah, yeah. Who did he play again, Creston? Me. He did indeed. Yeah. yeah no. I, yeah. It was a tough match for me against Casper. Um, I would have loved to play Leon there in the second round. Tough draw, obviously. Have uh, you played Leon before? Yeah, I played Leon uh, four times, I think. I never managed to beat him. 
actually. I'm very disappointed losing him the first t first time I played him, uh, but but since then he's just improved so much and he is unfortunately a better racquetball player than I am at this stage. Yeah, one of one of the very best. He took took apart Callum Reed in the final of the London yeah, Open earlier did. this year. He did. He did. And I think he's. I think Leon's sort of fallen back in love with racquetball. He had a couple of years where wasn't playing very much. Turned up for the really big events. Wasn't playing. Played, okay. played Latvia. Played UK events. Yeah. Wasn't playing too much. But I thought it was more more because of uh, his studies. Beca and yeah, and stuff, because of because of uni and. Uh, but he's graduated now and. He's in full-time work and he's playing this. He's playing Dubai in a couple of weeks. He's playing yeah. Prague a few weeks after that. So he's he's busy. He's active. Hopefully, I won't draw him in the first round in Dubai in uh, two weeks. <laughs> I would would prefer to get something uh, some slightly easier opponent. Talking of Dubai, that's another tournament where entry is still open, but only for a couple of days, I think. Uh, probably for. Only for 26 hours. Yeah, it's it's just Monday tomorrow lunchtime. Mon Monday lunchtime, I think. Yeah, it's the entry closest. So if you're watching this and fancy a bit of racket on in Dubai, should be great weather there as well. It should. Brand new tournament, of course. First time we've taken racket on to that part of the world. Just had my uh, my brother sign up to that one actually. I um, heard. So he's uh, he's coming back for a little uh, little racket on again. It's it's been a long time since we've seen him on court too. Yeah, when was the last time the two of you were in a tournament together? Was it La Santa? Yeah, that probably La Santa. 2018? 17? 18? Yeah, 18 probably. Um, I think that's probably the last tournament he's played. That would be great to see him in action out there. Yeah. I Lock. mean, he hasn't played any, any racket line at all. Like, uh, he, I think he's going to be very rusty. Um, playing a lot of paddle. Uh, he, he, he played the... European uh, team championships for Denmark uh, a couple of weeks ago in Bilbao. So he's still active, but uh, but not so much with the with the rackets with strings, yeah. <laughs> so, so to say. Uh, it's more of a bat. So uh, this nice. match coming to an end. It is indeed. Luke's nice little consolation point for Luke there, and, uh, and he'll take a lot away from this match. Yeah, it's his first experience playing playing the best best player ever. Um, it's obviously f fun for him at only 18 years old to to, to stand in a world champ semi final against such a legendary Reckland player. Yeah, and I think he'll he'll knowing Luke, who said he's very confident, he'll be disappointed after this. He will be, but when he actually has time to sit and reflect on the tournament, he's got to be very impressed yeah, with, yeah. with with how it's all gone, and he's got a lot to take away and and knows what he has to do now to get to that top level because he's yeah. played the best and he's come up short. But he's still only 18. He's got plenty of years left to grow. Yeah, Rats are, of course, right in the twilight of his career. Let's so see. This I mean, this this might be the last time we ever we actually see Rats to play uh, a Rackelon tournament or the World Championships. I mean, he if he gets this one in in his bag, he will have the records that he was looking for, and then I'm not sure he'll come back again. <laughs> 